Hey folks, so we're in the middle of the section that deals with operations between functions, specifically addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. This is an example video, so there are no notes involved in this particular video, just examples being worked out for you. So my first example here is example three, where we have f divide g of four, and so the first thing we'd like to do is to just simply write this down a little bit nicer than what we have given to us. So f of 4 divided by g of 4. Now you guys all know how to find f of 4. And just to remind you, the two given functions are written in the directions up there, x squared plus 3x for f and 2x minus 1 for g. So all we need to do then is take 4 and plug that into the f function. looks like this, and take 4 and plug that into the g function, it looks like this. Using the order of ops, we know that 4 squared is 16, 3 times 4 is 12, and the denominator, 8 minus 1, we'll simplify that, and we'll get 4 out of that. So that's a division example. A subtraction example, we've got here f minus g using the same two functions of negative 2. So again, let's write that a little bit nicer first. So we'll write that as f of negative 2 minus g of negative 2. Let's take the negative 2, plug it into our f function. It looks like this. And then take that same negative 2, plug it into our g function. You'll notice that I've used brackets around the entire f function and the entire g function. This reminds me that I have a, a minus sign that needs to be distributed to the second part of that. Let's go ahead and use the operations, order of operations, and in that first set of brackets, we've got here uh, 4 minus 6. Second set of brackets, negative 4 minus 1, but I have that minus out in front of the bracket, don't forget about that. Continuing to work my groups, that'll give me a negative 2 in the first group, a negative 5 in the second group with my minus sign brought down, which gives us a 3. Continuing on. An addition example. So I have two different functions now, a different f and a different g. And notice that the directions also tell me that I should find the domain as well. So not just find f plus g, but also to find the domain. Notice as well that um, this time I just have the generic variable x. I don't have a number to deal with. So first thing, let's, as we did with the others, let's write it in a nicer format. So f of x plus g of x. We know what f of x is. We were handed f of x. So let's just simply take it and plug it in 9 minus 2x. We know what g of x is. Take it, plug it in, negative 5x plus 2. Again, you'll notice that I'm using the brackets here. It just keeps things separated for me and keeps me from making mistakes that I shouldn't make. This time, however, there is nothing I can do inside of the groups. Because my 9 and my 2x are not like terms, my 5x, my 2, they're not like terms. So there's nothing I can do within the group. So I can go ahead then and just simply combine like terms between the two groups. So that means that I can use the 9 and the positive 2. I can also use the negative 2x, adding the negative 5x, combine my like terms, and that's going to give me an 11 minus 7x. I personally like to rewrite that so that my constant is last, so I would rewrite that as negative 7x plus 11, although the line before that is every bit is correct. Remember that we were asked for the domain. We've already talked about two tips for the domain during class, so bring that with you as we look at this question. Um, do I have any variables in the denominator? No, I do not. Do I have any square roots with a variable inside? No, I do not. So therefore, my domain is going to be the set of all real numbers. So that's an addition example. Next, let's look at a multiplying example. So again, as we've done with the others, rewrite it in a nicer fashion, f of x times g of x. Secondly, plug in your f of x, your 9 minus 2x. Plug in your g of x. Now, we remember that when I'm multiplying two binomials, and you would have learned this back in Math 101 and Math 102, when I am multiplying two binomials, I have to FOIL. So when you FOIL, 
you have the following statement and this shows you the first, the outers, the inners, and the last. You can pause to take a look at that if you need to. Combining my like terms as well as cleaning things up here is what's going on. And then last but not least, we're looking for our domain. Again, there are no variables in the denominator and there are no square roots with variables inside. So my domain is gonna be all real numbers. Another one, this was slightly odd. So I wanted to do one for you like this, subtraction example, dealing with one of those square roots that we were talking about. So first thing, again, let's write it nicely. Plug in your f of x plug in your g of x. Excuse me, I uncovered a little bit too much there. I'm not sure what happened. f of x minus your g of x. Now, when we take a look, and you already saw that I had uncovered the uh, domain of all real numbers, we have no variables in the denominator, but I do have a variable inside of a square root. So you're asking yourself, remember that anything inside the square root has to be either a zero or a positive number. But when you look at what's inside our square root, take x squared, any number squared is gonna be positive. Take that positive, multiply it by a positive four, it's still positive. Take that positive number, add a two to it, it's still a positive number. So every single number you could ever plug in for x is still gonna yield a positive number out of that. So our domain is still all real numbers on that. An example of a multiplication. So again, write it nicely. Multiply the two. There's absolutely nothing you can do with this. The only thing I wanted to do is to make myself feel better. I wanted to just throw that X out front. It makes it look a little nicer. My domain, once again, we've already discussed this, is going to be all real numbers on that. Uh, a table example here, um, f minus g of 4. We're taking a look here at part b is the example. And so let's write it nicely first. f of 4 minus g of 4. Go to your table. f of 4, well, here's my 4. So you'll see that f of 4, excuse me, f of 4 is going to be 0. So we can plug that in then. G of 4 is also 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. Part C then, an example there, F times G of 2, write it nicely. F of negative 2, you'll notice here, is negative 4. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. G of negative 2 is positive 2. Multiply those two together and you have your negative 8.